Yeah, really. Okay, guys. Um, before I start, uh, let's. We got. We forgot a few things. Um, Mark, I just noticed you're here, our ambassador to Canada. Mark, not to put you on the spot, do you have anything to say about what's happening on the model scene in the U.S. you want to talk about? Well, we're only a few weeks away from the RaceCon. That's the big yeah. show. Um, yeah. Another big show took place this past weekend, MosquitoCon, and there's uh, was just there, there's still this COVID. people are bringing really fantastic work. It's a little demoralizing for modelers <laughs> like me. One one show up in Rhode Island is uh, wondering with uh, the competition getting so heavy with the IPMS judging system, you know, um, gold, silver, bronze just doesn't seem to, you know, spread the love enough. And then AMPS is so much labor intensive. They're actually thinking about doing a, um, a Telford type show where um, all you guys from Toronto would come down and display all your best models and there'd be vendors and seminars and stuff. So I think some of these clubs are just trying to get creative and trying to deal with um, where we are right now with the hobby. But that's mm -hmm. all I can get, share with you. AMPS, I think, is uh, coming up this coming week. Everyone see that? Yep. Yep. Okay, I'll go through. All right. So um, us, this one's going to focus only on the A6M20. Everyone's heard of the Zero if you're into military modeling. Uh, very many variants, but we're going to focus only on the A6M20, which is the model kit that was recently released back in December by Edward. Okay, and let's see. All right. Quick question: Is it pronounced Edward or Edward or how's it pronounced? Edward. I've I've kind of heard both, you know. So I, I've, both is fine. So. <laughs> yeah. But by the way, with this slide, it's updated a bit. But this um picture up here was released in December. They have now done a Rabal version uh, with Saburo, Saburo Sakai's markings uh, mm -hmm. and as well they've got um, a late war markings now. So they've got these three releases now in 48. It is by far the most accurate uh, 148 A6M2 by far on the market after so long years of being absent with the only one being Tamiya. Okay. Uh, it was released back in December the only suggestions I'd give you if you were to build this model, it's incredibly accurate. Uh, but there are some things that you can add to the cockpit, wiring, rudder cables, seat bungee cord, uh, and any aftermarket replacements, which are the following. These are all the aftermarket that you can now get. Because why buy a model and not get all these aftermarket goodies, says ourselves to our uh, wives. And they would go, yes, dear, that would be a wise purchase. So um, these are the ones that you can get. Also, you've got some neat little things that you can get, like this one here, landing flaps. I don't know whether you really need to replace the wheels, but you know, you've got a lot of nice little things here that you can add to your zero. And most of them are also by Edward or Edward or whatever. Stop me if I have any questions. All right, I'm gonna blow through this pretty quick. So A6M2s had their um, lineage from uh, uh, A6M1s. But again, I'm only going to provide uh, a 6 They're kind of like 109s. So if you're going to do one, you better do one right. Uh, the latter model was referred to as a 1-1. Sorry, the early model was referred to as a 1-1. And then the latter one is a 2-1, okay? This, illust this one here is an A6M2 type 1, 1-1, uh, illustrating you can see the cockpit rear glass here it's quite different so when you're building these things do your homework uh, and make sure you got the right variant and the right modifications here's a better way of explaining the differences in the rear part of the canopy right and again for you affectionados of aircraft there's people that know this stuff just like tiger tanks and bishop tanks and whatnot okay uh early a6m2 variants the <coughs> model now does everyone know what <laughs> What the two one means? Anyone know? Anyone to care to take a guess? Well, you notice I don't call it a model twenty one. It's it's really properly turned a model two one. Okay, the two is the airframe modification. The one is the engine. Okay, that means that this A six M two model two one is on its second variation of the fuselage, but remains the same engine variant as the, the initial version. I know that sounds uh, a little technical, but there you go. It's kind of like when you look at the Army aircraft, people call them KI-61 or KI-43. That's incorrect. It's KI-61 or KI-43 Oscars, KI meaning KI-TIE um, for Army aircraft types. 
so that uh, pronunciation is the correct one, not Ki. So the early two ones had early mass balances on the ailerons. You can see some of them in here, like here. Some of them had them, some of them didn't. So do your research when you're building an A6M2. I think it's a good illustration of some of the uh, outlet pipes along the cowl flaps uh, at the rear of the engine. Now, these were placed slightly higher on the early models. Um, and up to aircraft number 36, they were adjusted and moved to the bottom of the cowl. So these little things mean a lot to the detailers of A6M two zeros. Opening along the wing leading edge for the 20 millimeter cannon and initial models was square, not round. Uh, and they were later changed to circular. So be careful when you're building one, like for Pearl, they, you can have both, just research the serial numbers. Now, here's an example of an A6M2 model 1-1 in China. You note the difference between the fuselage colors. Remember, you see a lot of these zeros with a darker color towards the front, lighter color to the rear. Well, now there's pretty good evidence that there was pretty well only two theories to this. One was a lack of paint stocks, but the second, which is more plausible, was these were covered with tarps. And as a result of covering the tarps in China, this resulted in the bleaching of the exposed rear areas. So whenever you see these early zeros with a two-tone, it was not done on purpose, because why would they? It was basically a tarp covering uh, the aircraft. And here's some examples uh, that Sam and I added to, to illustrate why there would be color differences. And I suppose the same could happen on other subjects, but for the zero, that's the reason why there were these two-tone color zeros, okay? Some more pictures of the zeros of the 12th Kokutai operating in China. You can clearly see, see some of these are darker and lighter, right? Kill markings on zeros, yeah, they had them. Uh, unlike uh, Western uh, uh, Allied fighters, which are more prevalent, the Japanese did have kill markings. But these kill markings, FYI guys, um, maybe you'll see it on a Mark Felton production. These were not credited to the pilot. They were credited to the aircraft, okay? So these are combined kills for this particular aircraft. So if you are building one, Saburo Sakai, um, Ishizawa or anything, just realize that these kill markers are not to the pilot, they're to the aircraft. Good illustration of the folding wing tips on an A6M2 Model 2-1. Model 1-1s did not have them. So if you're building a Model 1-1 in China, they did not have folding wind tips. I'm um, not going to go through too much of these details. We're going to have these on the web. I'm just going to go over some of the highlights. Once they got over to Guadalcanal, you can see that they're still retaining some of the uh, external mass weight balances. These were later removed on ladder variant zeros. And uh, make sure that you do your research. Some had them, some did not. Another example of kill markings on zeros, again, third Kokutai aircraft number X183. These were again attributed to the aircraft, not to the pilot. These are some zeros taking off uh, aboard. Um, I think it's the carrier Junyo. Yeah, it's the carrier Junyo. Um, now, this is where it gets really, if you really want to build a zero, the white surrounds on the fuselage zeros were only indicative of Nakajima aircraft. And by the way, talking about pronunciation, if you really want to sound Japanese, it's not Nakajima, it's Nakajima. That's the correct pronunciation uh, if you really want to go to Japan and enter a model contest. <laughs> another, another shot, a uh, famous shot of another zero taking off Shokaku um, by Lieutenant Shingo Hideki. Another thing is Japanese names are always, um, it's opposite to Western names. Uh, the surname comes first. So that's the proper way to pronounce Japanese names. Everyone knows Yamamoto Isoroku uh, seeing off an A6M2 model. You look at this one, they started to apply uh, camouflage on uh, what were previously carrier-borne aircraft. You can see the modeling effects there. This was done around spring 43, and then they started to apply overall green. Uh, these are examples of an A6M2 model 21 of the 582 Kokutai at Buen and Kalihi, Bougainville. Towards the end of the war, they shifted them to kamikazes and a lot of these, even the A6M2 models, even though this is an A6M5, uh, this model is an A6M2. You, you can tell by the cowling here, it's an A6M2 variant. Uh, they, they put um, uh, kamikaze bombs on here 
Okay, you can see the rack there. So you can actually do early A6M2s as a kamikaze. Here's an unusual model. If you guys know zeros, this is a, probably an exception. See the long barrel? A6M2 zeros did not have long barrels. So this is a mystery aircraft. Somebody think, some people think that it was field uh, applied, but nowhere in the Japanese documentation do they say that A6M2 mo uh, early well, models. Well, were it's a captured aircraft, so did they maybe not change the guns? It could be. They're Japanese guns, so who knows? Absolutely. No one seems to know. Now, these were long barreled, uh, were on A6M5 zeros, but not A6M2s, because this you can tell by the calendar, this is an A6M2. So it would make for an interesting model if you guys want to do a, a kind of interesting zero. But good question, Brian. I'm not there there were zeros this. that went around on bond tours in the United States, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if that was maybe just a mock-up of a gun. Could be. It could be, yeah. No one seems to know. But or you can do... Be, maybe they're actually trying to make use of this thing in battle, and they had an ammunition shortage of Japanese ammo. Uh, so no, they're like, yeah. hey, put British guns in there and put 303 ammo in there. Yeah, who knows? There. But people do think that they were Japanese weapons, so who knows, right? Okay, okay. No one seems to know. I'm not going to go over these details for safe of time, but these are the data plates that you see at the uh, rear of the aircraft on the uh, port side. Um, and there's a lot of science to these things. If you are doing zeros, get these stenciling marks, right? There's now evidence now that say that, you know how you have zeros? That there's there, A lot of them did not have a, a red line here. Okay, for whatever reason on the wing warning markings, it did not have a red line here. Another interesting note, is here's a zero with the uh, exhaust stains on the uh, wheel cover here. See, look at that. When it's folded up, the stains come out. So you're doing models. This is the details that you want to know. Everyone talks about the proper exhaust stains on Lancasters and B-17s. Well, there's proper ones for a zero too. And there you go. Okay. Harvey? Uh, yeah. Would it be would it be fair to say that you are uh, obsessive about Japanese aircraft? Uh, yeah, I would say that. And uh, let, let's say that I posted on Facebook and Japanese uh, subjects that um, I asked people for opinions and whether I should sell my wife's wedding dress to help pay for money for a new Japanese aircraft carrier. Well, that didn't go off too well, so mix that idea. <laughs> that was April yeah. Fool's, I think, right? I would think, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wedding dress for a painting hood. How about that? Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, the, the, guys were, guys were, the guys were making comments. So we'll see you at your funeral, Harvey. You know, that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> I won't go into detail, but here's a nice um, shot of an interior of a uh, A6M20. <laughs> By the, the way, Harbor, uh, zeros have the folding wingtips. Yeah, some, yes, they did. Yes, they did. But good question, Mark. If you are building zeros, there were two manufacturers, Mitsubishi and Nakajima. There were no Mitsubishi zeros at Pearl Harbor. And I'll tell you why that's significant in a moment for, for, you, for painting purposes. I'm not going to go through all these. You can read it later when I send it out. But these are all the color details for you guys to, 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 to put in your file if you ever want to build a zero and what color the interior is. Seats. Okay, there were different types of seats. One on the left um, is a uh, early model A6M20. The one on the right is an A6M50. That's just pictures of the engine. Now we go into the exterior diesel. How many guys you knew that you can tell the difference when you look at a picture of a zero by the way that the line was painted between the darker color and the lighter colors? Now these wouldn't be at Pearl Harbor because they never had these top side green zeros. By the way, on a note, do you remember the movie Pearl with Ben Affleck, right? Um, a side note, they would called me to provide some technical and historic advice on the colors of the Japanese zeros. I sent them a whole bunch of stuff. What did they do? It was all ignored. If you watch that movie, these zeros with the green are, are flying in the movie, which... Why bother asking me if you're going to do that? Because they wanted your name on the credits. I, 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 it wasn't historical. even, my name wasn't even on there, but okay, don't even bother. But <laughs> It was okay. annoying. But look at this. The, the top one, it's a Mitsubishi aircraft. You can, you can be experts in the zero now. The bottom one is a Nakajima. The Nakajima had these sloping lines up to the rear, see, the rear stabilizer. The Mitsubishi ones did not, okay? 
So that's how you tell the difference between a Mitsubishi and a Kajima built zeros. I'm not going to all. Oh, I'm not going to go through all this. All to say that every time somebody asks me, it's the same question: What was the overall gray green on a zero? Well, there were many of them. Just read this, but I'll go over in a sec some of the um, paint swatches that uh, basically try to answer that question. But there was never only one. Okay, um, weathering, factory differences, um, all of those things. I'm not going to go through all these either. You can put it in your file folder later. These are some of the things to, to note when you're painting the exterior parts of a zero because they are pretty specific. Okay. Some of the new paints out. These sets here, this one just came out on the bottom, the 3G sets. They're really good for hand painting. Um, 3G, right on those small linear tubes. Everyone's waiting for these. So if anybody on this call knows where I can get these in Canada. Can you let me know? And I will sell my wife's wedding dress for these paints, MRP paints. I want them. These are some of the swatches. Now it doesn't turn out that great on the computer screen, but it gives you an idea. All the different colors out there, I attempted to do airbrush and hand applied. Um, this interior Aotake is what they used on the interior metal surfaces outside of the cockpit. They're all kind of more or less the same. You can choose any of them. One thing I am going to point out is under this, not many people talk about this. There are pure acrylics and there are synthetic lacquers, which they call acrylics. So when you have like the new model hobby, they call it acrysian. Those are pure acrylics. Okay. What does that mean for you guys? It means that you can thin these with distilled water, right? You do not thin an acrysian paint line with Tamiya thinners or it kind of gets gummed up. You can thin yeah, these. Tamiya thinner is just an alcohol mainly. Yeah, right. So when you get into the uh, Mr. Hobby Akias, these become what they call uh, synthetic, what they call synthetic lacquer, or synthetic acrylic. These are mm -hmm. kind of the same, same with Tamiya. Those are the ones that the guys have thinned with the Tamiya thinner, uh, rubbing alcohol, windshield wash, wiping fluid. Mr. Leveling Thinner, these ones, the Crezians are distilled water, okay? So take that note, right? And that's why I put this type here because not many people put this in the chart. What do we, what do we think? And the Crezian has its own thinner, by the way, and it kind of smells a little weird. Um, I wouldn't drink it, but there you go. I'm gonna end it here with some useful references. And these are the references. This is the newest one here out of Japan. It's really smoking hot if you really want to build zero. Um, so that's the latest version there. Um, so this one back here, Pacific Profiles Volume 5. It's now available um, on Amazon. It's really good if you want to get an idea of the Guadalcanal Buen um, zeros with the camouflage. It's really, really good. So I think it's around 50 bucks. I'm gonna end it there. Any questions on zeros? I told you I'd be fast. There will be a test. Well done, Harvey. Very well done, buddy. Yes. This will be posted on the IPMS site and uh, Mark will post it on the IPMS Nenny site as well. Okay, you... since, since, oh, since I'm not an airplane guy, um, you say it's manufactured by two different manufacturers. Yep. If I'm looking at the plane other than the paint job, can I tell a difference? Well, only by the only by the paint job, Ralph. Only by the paint job. Okay. Right now, if like I I forgot to mention, if you are doing a Pearl Harbor Zero though, and I'll, let me share another screen here. There were no Mitsubishi aircraft at Pearl Harbor. Why is that important? Let me hold on. Let me share the screen. Okay, this is this is one of my zeros. It's not an A6M2, but it's an A6M3. Now this zero is a is a Mitsubishi built zero. Now, why is this important? Uh, uh, by the way, this is 70 second scale. Um, you see the wheel wells and it's in the slide deck. It's slightly darker, but because you know the, the, the covers are going, it's the same color as the exterior of the aircraft, okay? On Mitsubishi built aircraft. On Nakajima, Nakajima aircraft, it was that Aotake blue, okay? But since there were no Mitsubishi aircraft Right at Pearl Harbor, you, you have to paint them and the Kajima, the Otaki. You know what I mean? You've got to do your homework. 
So that's why it's very important. Some people don't care. You want to have a hobby, have fun. But this hobby seems to have its lion's share of guys that love to research every bolt and nut on a bishop tank or a tiger. No kidding. Yeah. Tell me about it. There you go. Rivet so, counters, Harvey. Yeah, we're all rivet counters. So I know this is kind of boring, but like I said, you're going to do a zero and you bring it to a show. You don't want somebody to go, what the heck? He painted that. <laughs> that's it. That's it. But there you go. Harvey. Oh. Yeah, the, uh, that uh, Aotaki collars, because one of the things I was reading somewhere that the sub-assemblies were made in different uh, right. factories and, and they That's would right. come in so you could have a blue, a green, and sort of yes. all the finish or whatever, so they can be completely different drawing the colors. Yes. Did that color ever go through, that was only interior stuff, that, that was not painted under the sort of the outside you no. shouldn't show it on the outside of the plane right no uh, good question they were never used on the outside as a primer um good question so it's in the slide deck japanese zeros like german tanks were primed in red brown now oh. the otake blue that you're talking about matt was only applied to interior fuselage metal surfaces not the cockpit because the cockpits were that olive green color right the, the outside of the zeros were a red brown. So you saw my model. It's really artistic license. I, I suppose I could have done some chipping methods to reveal the red brown primer underneath the aircraft gray green. But yes, they were primed red brown, kind of the same color as German armor. Okay. Wow. Okay. That I didn't know at all. Very there cool. Thank you. Okay.